Greetings, folks, and welcome here to the Small Business Show, where we will be small businessing again all day, as we do every week. Well, really, we do it every day, but, uh, but you know, with, with all of us here, we do it once a week. So uh, That's right. We're, we're going to revisit ADHD today, Shannon. You and I I'm had- a little nervous. I'm a little nervous about uh, our guest today. They're gonna, I'm, I'm worried about being called out <laughs> <laughs> for everything I said a couple weeks ago, but I'm excited about it, too. It's great to- Get some follow up on that and a different perspective from uh, a cognitive scientist that has experience in a, this field. a cognitive neuroscientist, no neuroscientist, less. yeah, not just a scientist. Yeah, but. no, it, we. I as soon as we recorded that episode, I thought, oh, I got to send this to Brittany, and we need to hear what she thinks about. Uh, the the things that we said here. And so now you get to hear what she thinks about the things that we said here. And we're very excited about that. So at yeah, least yeah. I think we're excited about that. I think so. Well, we'll you know, hopefully she won't beat me up too bad, but there I think, you go. I think it's going to be a great show and I'm uh, looking forward to, uh, to speaking with her. Absolutely. Well, do you have anything else before we go? I don't. I'm ready to small business, man. He is Shannon Jean. I'm Dave Hamilton. And this is episode 323 of the small business show. <laughs> Joining us today, we have Brittany Smith, a cognitive neuroscientist and an ADHD coach with more credentials than I could spend time reading. Brittany helps people turn ADHD into productivity. Brittany, thank you for joining us on the show today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we did kind of the uh, the personal slash amateur run through ADHD and how we've turned that into productivity here a couple of weeks ago. And then we figured we might do really well, especially for us, but also for all of our listeners to have somebody like you come in who can actually tell us based on experience you've had with other people, how this all works and, and, and what, what parts of our experiences make sense and what don't, because we know, we know that there's a lot of anomalies about what we do here and, and we're okay with it. So. Anomaly is my middle name, Dave. So <laughs> uh, I'm ready to learn. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's right. So tell us, well, tell us about, I mean, you listened to that episode. I definitely want to hear about what you do, but I also want to hear your reactions to this episode because I'm really curious <laughs> how that landed. Yeah, I mean, it's your personal stories, right? Your personal stories right. are your personal stories. Right. Um, the, the fact is, you're you're right. There are an awful lot of a higher than regular population amount of entrepreneurs have ADHD. That's it's one of those things that you see more of us in. I do have ADHD myself, in case anybody's curious. Um, <laughs> I, I speak from experience in many ways. Um, I, I felt like it was really good to hear. The important thing there's to a remember, but, a butt coming. You, yeah, it is, it, but just <laughs> yeah. a tiny one. Um, That's fine. That the ADHD manifests differently in everybody. Um, right. Of course, as a coach, I'm not a therapist. I'm a coach, and I spend my life looking forward. Right, I spend my work looking forward. We talk about what do you do differently in the future. I just want to make sure any folks listening who might be like, "Yeah, but I haven't. It hasn't been a superpower for me." Feel right. like yeah, that's great. Okay, that was a different set of circumstances that you had. Like, what do you want to do with it? The reframing stuff you guys talked about, I'm all about it. There's so much good evidence on reframing, but not about the, like, the past is a lesson. It's only about what are you doing tomorrow? What are you doing tomorrow? Like and that, that's, that's, that's the main place to come from. Yeah. Uh, I like that. Yeah. We, we talk about our mistakes as tuition, but, but really our yeah. past is just our tuition. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I think that yeah. was, you know, when I started look at this concept of doing the show and I was doing more and more research, I realized I go, you know what, th th that's not going to be beneficial. I just want to talk about what has worked for me and how, you know, recognizing that as I got older, some of these things that I struggled with, uh, as a kid trying to sit in a chair all day and not move, you know, my feet, uh, th those things actually turned into a benefit as I got older and I could get out and run around and make my own decisions. So it worked out good. Yeah. And, and learning about yourself. I mean, all of these, this past that we have and, and whatever you were doing, you're learning about yourself. You're learning about what arsenal you brought into this world. 
um, you know, just to dive into my personal perspectives on ADHD, this is the set of tools that we came into this world with, and it's got downsides and it's got upsides. And if somebody's asking you to sit still in a classroom and that doesn't feel very natural to you, um, that's a downside in that moment, right? But there are other ways we can leverage it. And it's really about taking the upsides and the downsides and leveraging them differently. Mm. Like that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I mean, and I know you, you, as a coach, you're focusing on each person's individual story, which is the, the best, the only way to do it. Are there any general things that you have found that can work for folks that maybe quite haven't quite figured out their path yet? Yeah, I, th there are some. And, and the important thing is when you hear folks talking and sharing their own ADHD experiences, by all means, take the ones that resonate with you and not the other ones, right? You're, you're hearing sure. us talk, you're hearing these fine hosts talk and, and take the ones that are relevant to you. But that said, there are a lot of things that, that you can bring in together. I mean, Shannon, it was so cool to hear that, that you've used a tool that I like to bring people's attention to because with ADHD, we can either like get into our uh, analysis paralysis or we can just make the impulsive choice. And, and so sometimes I, I call it using one ADHD thing to get out of the way of another. If I can use my impulsivity to stop twisting in the wind on a decision, like that's using my ADHD to stop a negative ADHD thing. And that can be really cool and really powerful. I like that. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, you know, kind of turns in my experience turned has turned me more into like a yes person. Okay, yeah, let's do it. And sometimes, you know, it burns me right to the ground. But <laughs> enough, often enough, uh, it's, it's, you know, rewarded me. So I've kept, you know, doing it over time. And and I do, Dave often mentions that, uh, you know, analysis paralysis type thing mm -hmm. where you're just overthinking and I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. And so as entrepreneurs, where we're just kind of thrown into that realm of making these decisions on a day-by-day -day basis. And I used to tell my employees the same thing. It's like, I'll never criticize the you know, that you made a decision. Now I may critique what you decided to do so we can all learn from it, but by all means, you have to make those decisions so you can, so you can keep moving forward to your point earlier. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, it's so important. And it's great that you are empowering them to make those decisions so that they won't feel like they have to get stuck in wondering, you know, what's the right thing to do. Um, one general thing is if somebody is having some issues with anxiety and depression, those can get in the way. So make sure you're tackling those head on um, because then you can be left with more of the strengths, right? Yeah. More of the, the important things. My definition of ADHD is it's extra human. It's all of those like creative, wild ideas, things that make humans amazing. We just do more of those, but we also forget our keys more often or whatever <laughs> are the silly human <laughs> yeah. things we do. So right. it's just, we're really good at living in the extremes and, and less so at uh, the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the yeah. middle is not comfortable. For, <laughs> it's not at all for me. No. Yeah, and no. and you know, you mentioned like you know anxiety and depression too, and and that I, I think really can be a, uh, you know, a tough combination with ADHD and mm -hmm. with you know one leading to another and that kind of thing, and that's where. Uh, you know, looking at like my son, his ADHD and was so frustrated with learning. And I just was constantly trying to, uh, it sounds bad, but it's not, you know, program him to know, hey, you just learn in a different way. So we have to address that and and look at how we can get overcome these other things where, you know, he just thought, he's like, I'm just not as smart as all my friends. I'm just like, it has nothing to do with that. Um, no I, correlation I, in case anybody's worried. Yeah. No correlation. Um, yeah. No, that's great, Shannon. And it sounded like another thing that you do is self-disclose. I have this mm -hmm. too, you know, or I think I do. Right. Yeah. And um, and this is a struggle I've had. So they don't feel like it's just them. And it right. doesn't feel right. like, oh, it's just me. Um, in, in terms of of other strengths to leverage. Keep in mind like where some of the issues are. We have what a scientist like to call low working memory usually. Um, what that means is if I have to keep track of three things that are totally unrelated, uh, call the dentist, uh, fill out my car insurance and pick up prescriptions, right? Um, that is like almost the same as some gigantic project with yeah, huge We should have my wife on the show. She could tell you that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Makes right? Sense. 
Mm-hmm. And, and so we can do something as long as those things are connected and related to an outcome we can visualize, right? We're on it. But, but once you've got those like little disparate things, oh my gosh, it can be so overwhelming. I, I really wanted to double down on what you'd said uh, last week, which was, if you can hire an assistant, you know, I, I am a really smart person and I am never going to be the world's best secretary, no matter how hard I try. That's not how I'm wired. Yeah. Um, that I will never be the world's best secretary. I might suck a little bit less than I do right now, but it's never <laughs> going to be where I excel. Right. <laughs> right. Sure. Um, I need, I need to leverage those, those differences. You know, I, I have a collaborator who is also on the spectrum and we call it her magical unicorn superpowers because she can look at a task list that we have to do together and think it's fun to organize it. And I would rather bang my head against something. <laughs> and that's her magical well, but- unicorn superpower. <laughs> But that task list, it, it, and Shannon and I both agree on this, and it's probably because we have similar brains, at least in this regard, that the simpler the task list, the better. GTD does not work for me. No, me neither. And, and so what, what I have found, and it turns out Shannon found the same thing, different paths, same result, is having a very simple task list. And like you said, those three simple things, if they're not related I will not remember to do them unless I put them on my list. And then I can just finish a task, look at my list. Ah, I, and I, I think of my calendar, my task list in my calendar is sort of the same thing in this regard, obviously slightly different uh, implementations, but I think of them as my ability uh, to hack my super, my, my future self. Right. So if I put something on my calendar that I don't want to do today, if I put it on tomorrow and I see it there tomorrow, well, I got to do it. It's on my calendar. And the same is true with my to-do list. And so like you built simple a good habit list. there though. Like yes. I, I want to warn anybody, like once you start started breaking that commitment to yourself, like it is, it's it over. just doesn't work anymore. Any Correct. trick you use like that, it's just will stop working. Um, so I have the, the, my trick, my yeah. trick, my the, my trick for sticking with that is stealing something of Shannon's where he says, I like to be able to to decide what story I'm gonna tell. The story I like to tell repetitively about myself is that I'm a productive person. And the only way I can continue to tell that story honestly is if I am actually a productive person. And so, no, that's what fuels me to go do those stupid things that I put for my future self to do on the calendar. But but yes, you're right. It's easy to say, oh, forget it. And then it's over. Yeah, I'm a big believer in the simple. We are so good at making things complicated. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. we're really good at it. So you always need to start as simple as you can get away with. Um, someday I will meet David Allen. He will get together with me and we will write the ADHD version because the principles in many cases are solid. Like if you have a simple list and it's like, this is my errands list and this is the junk I do at my computer and that's it. Right. That right. would be following the principles. Um, like, Fair. and, and you do have to go look at the list again at some point. Right. Right. Like you do have to look at those things on a regular basis. I I would argue the principles are solid. He's not a cognitive neuroscientist. And um, there are some uh, logical fallacies, well, not logical fallacies, but heuristics that people use to understand the world um, that you did not take into consideration when writing that. If you spend a whole chapter writing about 42 folders, it does not matter that you said at the beginning, maybe this doesn't work for you. Because all we remember is I wanted to die when you explained the folder system. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a good place to stop reading in my opinion. Well, and I think it, you know, um, uh, you, you mentioned this up on your, on your website, this um, guilt and shame cycle of not getting things done and falling behind and all that kind of stuff. And, and when I read that, I was like, wow, you know, I have, I definitely have been stuck in that cycle before and I'm always hard on myself, but, we've talked about this concept here. I finally force myself at the end of the day also to write down everything I did. So I, I call it my to did list because I don't want to leave my desk feeling that way. Like God, I didn't get anything done, but actually I bounced around like a squirrel all day and I did achieve these things and I knocked off these tasks. But if I don't force myself to recognize that I do kind of get in this spiral, like I didn't do a damn thing today, you know? Yeah. The spiral is normal. Um, and, and, and part of it is our, our motivational networks are just wired a little bit differently. Um, still trying to, you know, 
I wouldn't say there's a definitive study that's really good at illustrating exactly how it's different, but I can see it when I work with people for sure. And, and yeah, we're, we're really good at noticing the stuff we didn't do and having some way to remind yourself, what did you do? I mean, in, in the groups that I've run, that's part of what we make sure we do is acknowledge like, what did we get done? So we're reinforcing that positive energy and it can move forward into the next day. It may feel like I'm giving myself a palliative or a pass, yeah. but, but what it really is, is you're building up that energy. You're building up the reward system for the future. Oh, right. I did this thing. Okay, and then you feel better to tackle more stuff later. Yeah, it gives it fuels Good me point. to with yeah. confidence that I can yeah. okay, I can I can get this other stuff done. Of course, look what I did yesterday and the day before. Yeah. Being hard on ourselves may have worked for a little bit in high school or college to like get a paper done, but it is a really bad long-term strategy. It it'll really deplete you. And my guess is I I I am quite thankful that I've never experienced anything remotely uh, approaching like chronic anxiety or chronic depression. I've had my anxious moments. I've had my depressed moments. And I understand there's a world of difference between the two. Uh, with with COVID, I, I actually did start experiencing a little bit of more consistent anxiety for a while there. And I can see where if if I were to get down on myself about not being productive, how that could potentially fuel that sort of obsession as well. Right. I mean, I I, I don't know nearly as much as you, but as I understand it, depression and anxiety and addiction and, you know, all of these things are, are some manifestation of obsession and being careful not to navigate too deeply into those waters has been a good thing for me. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and knowing what does work for you, but right. yeah, the, the really getting down on, on people and, and uncertainty was another big thing in pandemic. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, a lot of diagnoses have happened in the last year that didn't happen before. Or people who said, uh, I had these strategies like going to a coffee shop for structure or going to the office and then I didn't have distractions at home that were working for them and now they're gone. And and so, yeah, there's been a lot of that either. Oh, I what I had, I can't do anymore. I need something new. Or new diagnoses. Right. Yeah. Makes yeah, sense. That, that feedback loop is is gone. Um, one of the things I, that I talked about on the ADHD show was just you know tools and techniques that that I use that work for me. You know, I talked about reminders, calendars. Uh, we talked about assistance. You know, that kind of thing. Um, is there other things that you do with your clients? And I don't know the typical age group that you work with, and I don't know if they're younger folks or whatever, but. Uh, is there any kind of other tool that maybe I missed that uh, you could enlighten us with today? Um, you know, that like, hey, try this or try that. So generic tools. I mean, if it, you're talking about like task lists or anything, those are so personal. But yeah. um, I, I am a, a big believer in the as simple as you can get away with uh, one, <laughs> but make sure you're getting the real reminders. Um, in general, on technology, uh, in order for those reminders that you have that are really vital because you know either the uh, harmony in your household depends on it or your job <laughs> or you know productivity um, make sure that the other alerts aren't on so that oh, you know yeah. you're not you haven't gone numb to all of the excess alerts mm -hmm. and because that can be a really huge thing um, plus notifications it can ruin your flow. from other, yeah and <laughs> yeah. notifications from other apps and things like that too yeah yeah if i have a whole long list in my notification center of all the facebook notifications oh yeah Nightmare. then how am I going to see that reminder that's actually really important? And the longer it sits there, the lower your motivation is to do it. So the more, you know, that whole, like, I'm going to put it by the stairs so I remember to do it. Each time you walk by it, you're lowering your motivation and increasing the willpower you will have to use up mm. in order to get that thing done. So you want to make sure that you can tackle it as soon as you can, you know, those big, like, looming things. If, if it's yeah. something that's been haunting you a long time, do it with a buddy. Like it could be a coach or it could be a friend. Like if there's something terrifying in that pile that you need to do, like it's okay to bring in somebody else to just be there while you do it. Um, there's like co-working systems. Focusmate's a big one. I have my group that we run and they have co-working options to like tackle it with somebody else because a lot of folks with ADHD are socially motivated. Um, you know, I'll do something for my business. I may not do for myself. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, or, I, or my collaborator or something like that. I like that you 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 said it 
it takes a lot of your willpower to do that. You, you actually phrased it better than I did. I, I always think about how I start the day with a limited amount of willpower points to apply. And if I can do things that require none of them by perhaps being motivated to be a productive person, it doesn't cost me any willpower to go and do the things that I'm serving this other goal. And, and then there's the stuff that it's like, oh, I, I got it. I just know I need to do that. That's what I spend my willpower points on and trying to hack my brain so that the things that I need to do don't cost me willpower points is a huge one. Yeah. And I've seen this in real life. I've never read a good study on it, um, but I think that there's a similar pool of reserve for decision making. Um, the willpower and decision making hmm. come from a similar resource when people have made a ton of decisions. And, and there's some on that, that, that their willpower is lowered, like they'll overeat and stuff. Um, so, and do you find the same the same with, you know, if you keep putting off those decisions, it just gets harder yes. and harder. So yeah, and the uh, more yeah. you more you deliberate over them, the more it's going to drain you. Interesting. And, and so that is one of those things where, like, if you can just like stop and say, "Wait, what's the worst one?" Um, when I come to something that I'm like, I don't have an answer for this. Like, I, I don't need an ADHD coach to teach me about ADHD. Like, I'm good. But I have a coach because. It, it's a quality of life for me. If I hit against something that I'm like, I don't know how to handle this. It goes on the list to talk to my coach with and like, just have somebody to speak about it out loud to, and then we can work through that together. And so I don't have to worry about it. I know that's happening on Thursday. Like <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's, I will that's take really care of that on smart. Thursday. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, um, I love, I love your, I mean, you mentioned, you know, and like, being transparent and talking about it. I think that's really good too, but also just the concept that I completely missed when I was, when we were talking about this a couple weeks ago is asking for help, you know, get having somebody help you, whether it's an accountability person or just someone to help you get over that, you know, something that's just, you're hitting the wall with. I think that's just really powerful. Uh, and thank you for bringing yeah. that up. And they can be online. I know it's hard to interact with real people. <laughs> Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, that's, that's true. You're right. You're right. And like, I, one of the things I've always, like I, I have mentioned here on the show before, I want to be relied upon. It's something that makes mm -hmm. me feel good about myself. So if somebody like, I, I, I think I've tried to position myself where I'm like, well, they're relying on me to do this. So I have to do it. I can't put, like, I can put off I mean, you name it, I could put off tons of stuff, but if someone else, if Dave is waiting for me to get back to him or, uh, Hey, we're having, we're recording this show at, at, you know, today I'm going to, you know, there's no way I can't work myself to that and get that done. So maybe that uh, it might be a trick that I've used to, um, that I just can't get out of it. It has to happen. I have to decide about, you know, X. I do the same thing that, that being seen as a productive person, there's a, there's a, a, yeah. a, a side of, and, and a reliable person. You're creating your own reality right there. That's it, right? And I'll tell you where I see that fall down the most. Okay. It's when people have overcommitted. They haven't been using uh. their no appropriately. And so <laughs> now they're like, I have to do this thing. And they just have all the anxiety to do all the things instead mm -hmm. of like, you know, that little, a little bit, um, take a step back. What, what do I say no to? So that the things I yeah. committed to for reals I can really do. And and do you help, you, you know, your, your clients, is that something you, is that a learned skill that you can help teach someone look to, to decide that these are the critical things? These are not, I mean, that's very Yeah. Hard. It's best when people come up with it themselves. Yeah. Um, and so I, I try to be gentle about it. Um, but I will say that sounds like a lot. If I'm thinking to myself, I have worked really hard at studying these things and I don't think there's any way I could do that in that amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I can see it too. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I was like, and that if you sounds don't, like a lot. Yeah, um, and I, is like, there anything and, you can cut? Or and right. sometimes we'll walk through the steps. Or you know, um, if this was due in an hour, what would you actually get done? Like we'll walk through exercises like that to sort of put ourselves into the deadline mindset before the real deadline happens. Because we're just well, better deadlines at making are awesome choices motivators. Then. Yeah. 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 No, <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, and I think as entrepreneurs, again speaking for myself. Um, I was, uh, the concept of having to meet someone else's deadlines is, is just not a very motivating thing for me, but when I'm part of the process and I'm involved and I'm putting that energy in there, it, 
I mean, it really fuels me to knock things out, get things done, take things off the list. So maybe I, I uh, just, you know, I guess the question I'm asking is perhaps that part of my personality or a person that has ADHD uh, leads you to more of that entrepreneurial thing because you just want to be in the process, maybe. Mm. It could be. There's also the like, I'm not good at working for other people. What? <laughs> we, we call that patently unemployable here. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it's, yeah. a, uh-huh. it's a badge we wear with honor. Yes. <laughs> That is true. Yeah. That is true. Or escaping employment. We've had a few guests talk about that. Where um, there was that one thing I just remembered that you talked about, which was um, you talked about it in terms of like uh, not truly multitasking, but moving between tasks rapidly. Um, right. But you mentioned something that I I do believe is an ADHD strength, uh, even when you're not <laughs> rapidly cycling between tasks, which is seeing these connections that other people aren't seeing. And, and that is an ADHD strength. And we, we tend to do very well in big picture um, or, or mm, super zoomed in right. if you're doing like programming or something. <laughs> but No, that's but, true. Yeah. But, but yeah. It's, again, that middle ground is so rough. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if I start my day without any appointments, you know, no podcast to record, no actual hard deadlines, that is a, a sign to me now that my day has a high probability risk of being completely unproductive and wasted. And if I start putting even artificial deadlines in, now I can I can compartmentalize and get stuff done no problem. But that like you said that middle ground that gets really wishy-washy for me. And sometimes it's okay to have a day like that where, where I just kind of float between things and and just kind of, I, I call them creative days, although I don't actually create very much on those days, <laughs> but it's where I let okay. my brain just sort yeah. of guide me and, and interesting things happen, not always productive or financially lucrative or anything like that, but it, it, it does, it's good to kind of let my brain just like go every now and then. And, and then, okay, great. Now t- tomorrow we actually have to get back to work and, you know, do those things. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's normal. It, it's normal for me and it works. So there yeah, you go. I mean, I could book this because Tuesday, I mean, other than my volunteer things, Tuesday is my creative project day. And, oh, I like and that. so, so I you like, have it scheduled. Yeah. So yeah. I have it blocked out from clients out of my booking system because, um, sanity reasons, but also sure because, yeah. because I can't decide this week that next week I need a whole day to myself. Right. Fascinating. Yeah. And so, so that's what I have scheduled and I can put things in that are, um, but it also like, if I want to do filming, I really do want a big old chunk of time to do it in. Like it, it's not a thing that can be broken up into small chunks very well. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> All right. So now I have a question for you mm-hmm. um, in terms of how you manage your own productivity, because this is something I fail at all the time. If I have a big project to do, you mentioned filming. That's a great one. It doesn't really matter mm-hmm. that what it might be, but, but that's a great example. So when you're going to do filming, how do you convince yourself not to Oh, well, let me just check my email and make sure I'm not missing anything important. It's a challenge, um, but I don't usually, I, I, it's happened occasionally, but usually they're planned out. Like I've got an active project or sure. it's like, this is the time I have set aside to edit the old project. Because again, editing is not one that takes, but it can be tough. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll hop on because I have a co-working channel um, in the discord for my group. And I'll be like, I'm doing this. And I've just, I've just committed out loud to doing it uh-huh. to people. Um, and one time, <laughs> one time I hopped on a live, uh, a live YouTube stream and I was like, I'm just working on something. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and, and I found that to be somewhat useful. I mean, I have to put yeah. it in the Interesting. So no one An external to commitment. The audio. Yeah. Yeah. And so sometimes yeah. I'll do something like that. Interesting. You know, to your your example, Dave, of how you you know managing your day. One of the things that I've realized is that if I get too many long term projects going at one time, I have a hard time with uh, making progress on those things. <clears throat> Excuse me, without mixing in some short term. So I always talk about you know, I start my day at zero. And at the end of the day, I want to see how much money I made. That's just the way I, I think. And so I always have short-term 
uh, I'm a product guy. I sell things. I've sold things my whole life. So I always have things I can measure on the short term that I can get done. Like, oh, I know if I do steps one, two, and three, I'm going to book these number of sales today. But I also know, like, okay, I'm working on an audio book for, uh, you know, my eBay Unlocked, uh, you know, publication. Well, that's going to take me, you know, weeks, but I'm going to work on that a little bit each day, but I'm not going to get that instant reward that I'm looking for. Um, So mixing up those kinds of things, you know, has worked well for me. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it's one that you'll dread it if it's really long. I mean, totally. I I think there's this sort of false... uh, false limitation that we sometimes have uh, on certain tasks. Like there are some that really do need a big chunk of time, but others that we really could break up into little pieces. Um, And so sometimes folks will get stuck with, oh, I need a huge chunk to make any progress. But then the chunk is so huge and they're dreading it so much that they can never face it. And, And so sometimes something I'll do with someone is like, let's chunk this down. Like, you know, if my voice is dragging, recording an audiobook after 30 minutes, then I'm just going to have a 30 minutes and then I'm done. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah. Th- no, some good. really great tips and, and tools. And I'm glad you didn't come on and just beat me up to death. I was expecting just to get destroyed, but <laughs> but, but it's great. I, I love the, the those things like you mentioned, mentioned being transparent, asking for help and, you know, these uh, like your example of going out into a group and saying, I'm doing these things. It's kind of almost like you're just introducing some level of accountability. Those are just really powerful tips. And uh, we appreciate you, you know, coming on and talking about it today. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, thank you so much. When you need things. Yeah. Recognizing what you need and then figuring out, okay, how do I get it now? And that, that yeah. can be just more powerful than anything else. That's really great. Yeah. That's how great. do how do we send pe- more people to you to to get help if they've listened to the show and think we're crazy and want somebody that really knows what they're doing? Uh, where can they find <laughs> you online? Um, on on Twitter, my more tech cited <laughs> Twitter is ADD Liberator, despite the name. Nice. And, um, I like it. I, yeah, huh? that's good. Yeah, and uh, the the more sort of business oriented one is uh, Devise underscore Conquer. Uh, my website's conquer.consulting. My wait list for one-on-one clients is long, um, but I am running what we call an ADHD guild. It's part oh, mastermind, great. part support group. Um, we have a Discord through the week. That's where I go on for the co-working channel. Um, and we're going to open up more uh, another section, maybe two um, in May. So... Excellent. Uh, and you have some good resources up there up too. Up, yeah. Up on your website. Really helpful. Uh, following me on Twitter, I think is probably always a great idea. Um, when I tweet. Really enlightening. Uh, thanks again for coming on and sharing your uh, expertise with us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Man, I, you know, I've, I'm obsessed with self-awareness. And so I feel like I learned a ton about myself, which in that regard means I won because I learned the most this episode. Shannon. Ah, I'm, not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, she was great. I, I like that. Um, you know, I, I could see that she's in, in the business of framing things a certain way and helping people get over things. And that, and that, that was the main takeaway I was trying to come up with on that episode was that, yeah. you know, like most things, uh, you, you can look at them various ways. And uh, why wouldn't you want to learn and train yourself and train others to look at it as, as a, a benefit, not a disorder? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So Great stuff. Great. I uh, Now I need to like, like co- cogitate on this and process and all of that. So yeah. 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 That's, no, that's great. That's but, what uh, I got thanks. for today. You got anything else? No, no. Thanks for listening. I hope you've uh, folks, I hope you found it useful. Uh, we'd love to get your uh, reviews of the show at businessshow.co slash reviews. Uh, and let us know what you think. Give us as many stars as you think we deserve. We think it's five, but it, we leave it up to you. Uh, and if you have questions or comments, feedback at businessshow.co. Thank you again for listening. Yeah, absolutely, folks. Thanks for listening and uh, keep on living that charmed life. Yeah.